Hi, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. It's good to have you back again. This is Virus Management Practice Questions, part three. Like I said, it's a five part series, and I'm Dr. Isabasi. Um, this particular series is couched in such a way that it helps you to revise positively so you will not see a lot of negative questions. I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to comment, to share, and to like. It's a free resource. So all these will help us to keep the channel alive. Thank you very much. All right. So question number one. Common laboratory hazards include chemical hazards, biological hazards, radiation hazards, physical hazards, electrical hazards, mechanical hazards. All these are hazards. So your answer will be all of the above. Question two, which of the following is not a way by which biological infections can occur in the laboratory? One, accidental needle puncture and open on the skin surely would occur. Spillage of unfixed cytology specimen and ingestion through mouth pipetting. Don't try that. Storing food and drinks in the same refrigerator as specimen and eating and drinking in the lab. That is gross. So which is not a way by which all of them are ways. So the answer will be none of the above. These are the steps needed to control hazards in the laboratory, true or false. Um, identify and assess hazards, true. Determine the risk from waste handling and disposal, true. Evaluate the risk, true. Record and review hazards, true. Regularly educate and train waste handlers, very, very true. Question four. True or false. The following are personal safety practices in the lab. No more pipetting, eating, and drinking. Use your PPE. Perform frequent hand washing. Treat all samples as potentially hazardous. Decontaminate all work surfaces. Dispose shafts appropriately. Avoid high heels and pack up long hair. All these are personal safety practices. So your answer is true. Question five. Which of the following is not a common bio risk management practice? setting A, proper waste disposal, B, regular hand washing, sharing PPE amongst colleagues. Why do you want to do that? D, contamination of surfaces and equipment. Odd one out, you don't share PPE. Question number six, what is the role of a biosafety officer in an organization to manage laboratory finances? No. Basi laboratory experiments? No. Enforce safety regulations? Well... D, to promote biosafety awareness. That will be the most appropriate. Question seven, bio-risk analysis involves sharing, answering three specific uh, questions, namely what can happen, what is the chance that it will happen, and if it happens, what are the consequences? B, what can happen, what should we do, how should we do it? C, what can happen, what should we do, can it be handled? D, what can happen? What should we do? Is the risk acceptable? I will go with A. Question number eight. Mention four processes of risk analysis. You have to be very careful because this looks very, very similar. Hazard identification, risk assessment, risk management, risk communication. That's A. B, hazard identification, risk assessment, risk mitigation, risk communication. C, hazard identification, risk assessment, risk mitigation, risk performance. D, hazard identification, risk assessment, risk management, risk performance. I would go with A. Question number nine. What is the purpose of a bio-risk assessment? Why do we have to do that? A, to increase the likelihood of exposure to pathogens. B, to identify potential biological hazards and assess their risk. C, to encourage unsafe practices in handling biohazards. D, to minimize the use of PPE. The answer is B, all the other ones look very, very odd. Question number 10, what is the primary goal of bio-risk communication? Why do you have that? You want to be able to inform the public about laboratory research. B, you want to promote biosafety practices among laboratory workers. C, you want to prevent unauthorized access to laboratories. D, you want to enhance collaboration between research institutions. 
your answer is B. You want to promote bias, you want to promote biosafety practices amongst laboratory workers. Okay, question number 11. What is the difference between a hazard and a risk? A hazard is anything that may cause injury, harm, or damage, while a risk is the probability or likelihood that harm may occur. B. Risk is anything that may cause injury, harm, or damage, while hazard is the probability or the likelihood that harm may occur. C. There is no difference. There are two and one the same thing. D. None of them is correct. I'll go with A. Question number 12. Please, I hope you've subscribed. I hope you've commented. I hope you have liked and I hope you have shared. These are free resources. Help us to keep this alive. So question 12, they ask te the steps necessary for, these are the steps necessary for accurate risk assessment. One, identification of hazard. Two, decide who might be harmed and how. Three, evaluate the risk and decide on control measures. Four, eliminate or control the harm. Five, record findings and information. Then six, review the assessment and update when necessary. So true or false, I go with true. Thirteen, outline the four rules of the medical laboratory scientist. A, he analyzes or she analyzes specimen, interprets and reports results for diagnosis of diseases. B, conducts research and produces reagents for laboratory analysis. C, ensures quality control, supervises other laboratory staff, and trains future laboratory personnel. I will go with all of the above. So question 14, which of this is not a responsibility of the medical laboratory scientist to the patient? A, protection of privacy or confidentiality, and uh, getting consent for laboratory tests to be performed from the patient. B, physical integrity and right to information. C, self-determination, no force applied. D, discussion of the patient's results with family and friends with good intentions. You don't discuss patients and results with family, friends, enemies, anybody. So I'll go with D. Question number four, 15. Is this sentence true or false? Risk evaluation is the process of determining whether risk, whether a risk is high or low and if it's acceptable or not. I will go with true. Question number 16. In biosecurity means motives and opportunity are determined by characterizing A, likelihood and consequences, B, assessment and evaluation, C, hazard identification, D, risk assessment. I will go with A. Question number 17, what is the primary goal of bio-risk characterization? A, to increase the virulence of pathogens. B, to minimize exposure to biological hazards. C, to identify and assess potential risks associated with biological agents. D, to promote unauthorized access to biological materials. I will go with C. Question number 18, which of the following factors is not considered during bio-risk characterization? A, pathogen type and characteristics. B, route of transmission. C, geographic location of the laboratory. D, number of research publications, <laughs> number of research publications. Yeah. All right, 19, how does bio-risk characterization help in the, in the development of mitigation strategies. A, by increasing the spread of infectious diseases. No. B, by identifying potential intervention and control measures. C, by promoting unauthorized access to biological materials. And D, by ignoring potential risks associated, associated with biological agents. I will go with B. The final but not, and the last question for this series. <laughs> Which of the following is a common type of bio-risk assessment tool? A, your microscope. B, risk matrix. C, hammer. D, tetoscope. Which answer will you choose? Remember that our video where we showed you 
um the tiger in the in the cage, the tiger, big tiger in the cage, small tiger in the cage, and you bring in your hand for it to lick and all that. You use a risk matrix. Oh my god. The answer is a risk matrix, not a microscope. A risk matrix, risk matrix, risk matrix. That is the answer. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Please answer to question 20 is risk matrix. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Like, share, subscribe, and comment. Bye, bye, bye.